really honored that you know, uh, you know, some churches there actually, especially River Life uh, Sanctuary that hosted us, and House of Cornerstone that is organizing all these things that you know, um, they have such a kingdom mindset that they just let out the place for, for us to use, uh, and and preach the gospel. So really uh, give thanks to it. So because because of that, so the first week, we reached there. Uh, so just to kind of introduce ourselves, we went to the church, right, the real life. Um, and House of Cornerstone is the one that uh, kind of make the connection. So Sister, Sister Evelyn is the House of Cornerstone pastor that kind of introduced us to Dato uh, Paul. Dato, Dato is a kind of like honorary title in Malaysia, where he's almost like a knight, like the British sir. Right? So he's the elder, uh, and he's also is a, a Dato, which is a sir right now. So it's a high up position in, in the government. So, um, so as soon as my wife and I were approaching him, my wife felt like a pain in the back, and, which is, and every time she felt a pain on somebody, she was like, I'm the one that will release the word <laughs> because she wouldn't ask. So I asked, you know, by any chance you have back pain? And I said, oh, yeah, he kind of like, how would you know? <laughs> and uh, so we pray, lay hands, nothing happened, okay? Um, so, but uh, anyway, so one week later, we, we started our Dominion uh, uh, Life, uh, not Dominion, it was, uh, it was DHT actually, it was DHT seminar. And the next day he came in and gave a testimony that, you know, uh, he was healed of the back pain. He said that at first he didn't realize it because this nagging pain is not something that is like reminding him all the time. But, but when he gets in and out of the car, or when he gets in, uh, in and out of the bed is where that nagging pain that comes, right? So that day he said, after we pray, when he was getting in his car, he's like, huh, it's all gone. And so he was, uh, and then he said, uh, and then he was turned around and asked my wife, say, so what's your name, sister? What's your name? Because it's like, she, you know, Holy Ghost healed through an unnamed person, you know? So that is very good. So uh, that kind of opened up uh, and give great credence to the, to, the, to the message that we brought forth. And so God uh, did really an amazing thing. So we give thanks to God. Um, so, um, so we were able to minister word to, to them and also uh, with House of Cornerstone doing Bible study. And so it was a very fruitful week. And, and I understand why Brother Curry would love to go out overseas because, you know, when you preach the, the, the gospel of the kingdom to them, they, are, they never heard of the gospel of the kingdom and they are so hungry. They want, and you know, you, 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 like, you get drawn, you know, to preach the word. So... So I, I realized that why he loves to go overseas so much because, you know, there's so much hunger overseas that need to hear the word. So, so I mean, as a JG Alamo, you know, we will come here together, but then you'll also be sent out too, right? So that is the model of this church. So, all right, praise God. So today, uh, we're going to bring forth message again. So um, now, because this is, now DHT is kind of the bedrock for uh, uh, this church, right? Um, so, but a lot of times because we do it so often and people are like, wow, DHT again, you know? Do you know why we focus on DHT so much? Because it's, it's in the gospel. Okay, let me ask you this question, right? Now, out of the 30, 35, I counted 35 miracles. Uh, so that means, you know, everything from casting out the devil to, you know, heal the sick, right? There are 35 miracles, in the gospel, not, not including Acts, just the, the gospels alone, right? Do you know how many of which was casting out the, I mean, restoring a person's health, basically? Casting out their demons and uh, restoring life and health. Um, I know some of you may know the answer. If you are in my live team, you should know the answer. But for those who are not in the, my live team, do you know how many percent of that? You, you, you should know it's quite high up, right? So maybe I'll give you the answer. It's about 70% of which uh, restoring a person's Mental health, you know, casting out demons, or restoring life. So the gospel of the kingdom ties to healing. Okay, if you don't believe me, let me show you on the scripture, right? So that is the reason why we keep repeating and repeating about DHT, because just like I said, the example that I used, the testimony that I just gave you, because of the healing, things just open up for us, right? So uh, now... Um, Matthew 4.23, Matthew 4.23, I'm going to flip the page so that you have the chance, uh, it's also for me to slow down, if not, I'll like, you know, okay, <laughs> yeah, I need to slow down, I was told you speak too fast, and I can't catch up, and okay, 
Matthew 4, 23. Okay, let's see. See, if I have to look up the verse, then, you know, I slow down and you get a chance to catch up. Okay, Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, right? See, the gospel of the what? Kingdom, kingdom right? So many times I often say that, you know, uh, we actually the first thing I did bef before our, um, the dominant uh, uh, teaching I, I, you know, have you ever played the pass on the message game where you line up 20 people and then you pass on the, like a signal or whatever and then he'll pass on to the front and you know how it turned out, right? Yeah. So sometimes I think the body of Christ has this kind of method, right? And when they, they hear the pastor say, then without checking the word, they pass on the pastor's word. And guess what? First century, second century, third century, 21st century, the message become completely, slightly different, I would say, right? So it clearly says that the first gospel that was preached by Jesus was about the kingdom, kingdom. okay? So why is it important that it's a kingdom and the gospel of death, burial, and resurrection? What is sort of a slight difference, I would say? Do you guys know the, the slight difference? I mean, they are, they are essentially the same, I would say, but one enables the other. The death and the burial and the resurrection enables the gospel of the kingdom to be effective because that is the key, right, that is given to the church. Or, in fact, that is the substance of things. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11 says what? Faith is a substance of things, right? So the substance is that we know Jesus died, buried for three days, resurrected, Therefore, we can hold fast that the kingdom is here. You see that? Once you understood that, it's like, wow, you know, hey, the, all the gospel, then you have to find out what's about the gospel of the kingdom. It's not just merely his death and the resurrection, but it's because of his death that enables the gospel of the kingdom to become manifested or effective in us. Okay? Now, let's read. Continuing, right? 423. He preached the gospel of the kingdom and, and what? Healing, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So why? Because in order to preach the gospel of the kingdom, you must demonstrate. Yes. Once you demonstrate that, then oh, 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 what kind of God is that? I want your God. Yes. Because ultimately, um, there is a verse, I think it's in Romans or Hebrews, I can't remember, but then it says that we are supposed to be the jealousy of the Israelite, right? You guys remember? We are supposed, the Gentiles nation, which is the church, supposed to be the jealousy of the original Israel. Through what? Is it being richer? Because some prosperity church would love to say that, oh, you know, you'll be a billionaire so that people look up to you. No. Is it, is it something else? Or is it healing? Healing. Healing is a sign to the gospel of the kingdom, okay? So that is the reason why we go over DHT again and again. So we are doing it again in our, our live stream. Shocker, right? <laughs> so we're going to do it again and again until we walk it out. So uh, I think there was one church, I remember somebody, there's a one uh, pastor that preached John 3, 16 or something like that. And then, so, and then it, he, what, the, the, the church was so on fire that they, they asked him to become the pastor of the church, right? And then the following week, he preached the same thing. And the same thing. And the same thing. It's like, huh? Did this pastor, you know, like, uh, <laughs> does he only know this? And then, and then they asked uh, the pastor, why do you keep preaching John 3.16? Well, until you guys walk out <laughs> the new creation, then I'll stop preaching. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, okay. So the next verse, uh, Matthew 9. Matthew 9. 